So the objective balanced reasonable uh, look at rough sex would be that it's one kind of sex out of many uh, different kinds of sex that a woman might like. And uh, some women like going to that place, some women don't, some women like it sometimes, etc. Right? Just uh, one of different kinds of sex. But that is, of course, not what is happening here. There's this whole massive distortion and misrepresentation that this is mostly the kind of sex that women want to have. Rough sex is definitely not the most powerful experience that uh, women can have. I know this uh, from experience of working with women. Rough sex, in my opinion, is kind of low-value sex. It doesn't have uh, that much for a woman. It will feel like a thrill. It will uh, get her out of her head, which women find very valuable because, you know, they pathologically suffer from not being able to be in the moment. But in terms of, you know, let's talk about like the nourishing, nutritious value of uh, sex for your life, which is a really useful exercise to think about. I think we need to ask ourselves more, what do certain kinds of sex actually give to us? What value they have for us in our life? Because uh, we can like something, something might feel good, but it's just not enough to consider that, you know, because we also need to consider what is the actual kind of nutrition, the value for us in our life, you know, how does it actually enrich our life properly with what? Now, what makes sense to you? What would really fulfill you as a human being? What would be aligned with your relationship? Because you can create this, you can develop it. Uh, there are kinds of sex that are for women uh, far more impactful, far more powerful. The more loving spectrum of sex for women uh, is far more powerful when she's really loved through her body. It is an experience of a loving energy. It's kind of unknown in our culture. We don't really have the know-how about it, but it is, you know, the most powerful kind of sex for women. It really affects their whole life really deeply, their well-being, their, their relationship, themselves, their energies. So this is a part that we forget, that we think that women love rough sex, but which is the part that we are feeding? Would it be still um, correct to say that women love rough sex above everything else if they had a really powerful experience of loving sex and if that was consistent? And if we nurtured that part, we fed that part, the woman was more conditioned to it. Now, I've actually taken a lot of people on that journey, women, from that place where they had affinity with, you know, rough sex because, you know, they come from this culture, from this environment. So rough sex is by far not the woman's greatest sexuality. And I actually find it quite, you know, tragic more than anything that it is becoming redefined as, you know, the woman's greatest experience. Now, there are reasons why rough sex is getting more and more airtime, though. Uh, women are getting more and more into rough sex. They're leaning more into it. And they're also uh, transmitting that message to their lovers that this is basically the sex that works best for them. Again, I'm not saying that uh, women don't enjoy rough sex. Of course, you know, some women enjoy it and some women enjoy it some of the time. But um, I think uh, a lot of what you're seeing now is quite inauthentic, that women are leaning into rough sex not for authentic reasons, and that uh, generally uh, it is not authentically represented how much women are really into rough sex. Women are generally in a crisis about their sexuality. Our culture doesn't understand how to access female sexuality deeply, how to really bring out the sexual energies. Women struggle to connect with their bodies. They struggle to feel enough in their bodies. They struggle to connect with sex. They struggle uh, to enjoy sex. Now, I'm not saying it's total zero. Women are managing to different extents, uh, but there's a lot of coping going on, you know? Doing something because uh, it makes sex work at least somehow. Rough sex is basically like a brute force approach. If you shake it violently, then you'll feel something in the world where you're struggling to feel something. Loving part of sex, you know, is really not working for women because it is really misunderstood and people are, don't really know the know-how, how to reach that most powerful part of the spectrum for women. So it's completely kind of out of reach. There is the boring monotonous sex that is basically just rubbing a woman to an orgasm somehow, one way or another. And then there is, you know, the, the extreme intense practices which are always preferable to the boring monotonous sex because at least they feel of something. So for a lot of women, this has become you know, a coping thing to at least feel something. Rough sex is basically like a defibrillator on female sexuality at the moment. Unfortunately, the more rough sex propagates, the less we are focusing on you know, really awakening the woman's sexual energy in a way that can heal her. So women themselves increasingly are feeling that they need rough sex to feel something. You also have to keep in mind that people often think about sexuality as something like, you know, static. This is your makeup and this is what I'm into. People think that sexuality is something really instinctive. In reality, I mean, that's quite an idealized view. It would be wonderful 
if people were natural and authentic in their sexuality. But I think most of the time, at the moment, people act in sexuality more from a conditioned place. What they were exposed to, what they were conditioned to, what was fed, what was uh, nurtured in a way. And uh, also from a lot of external influence. They do in sex what they, are, what they feel they're supposed to be doing, what they feel is expected, what is called good sex, etc. So I think actually a lot of sex is not coming from that authentic uh, place of being really naturally connected with yourself. Um, and I think rough sex, so I think it's very much a cultural and media phenomenon that has been imposed on people more and more over the last you know, 10, 20 years. Now, if a woman is treated all the time by men that uh, they expect her to be into rough sex, then they will be bringing out that side uh, out of her all the time. Now, that part exists in her. It is not fake, it is authentic, you know, uh, but that is the only part that is being called out. So therefore, the impression is created that this woman is into rough sex, even to herself, because does she enjoy it? Yeah, she enjoys it, you know. That's one of the sides of her sexuality that she might enjoy, but uh, she doesn't experience any others. So it's a very strange positioning. Are women into rough sex? Do they enjoy it? Well, yeah, but that is not the question. The question is, um, are they having all the other kinds of sex that they could be enjoying as well? And they could be enjoying even more. Are they developing into those areas of their sexuality that could be more fulfilling for them? Uh, especially the younger women. Uh, I get a lot of comments from younger men who are dating younger women and they are saying that, you know, all women seem to be into rough sex. I mean, this generation of women from uh, 30, early 30s below, uh, I call them the post-apocalyptic generation of women because they have grown up uh, in the post-apocalyptic world. They never knew the world before, uh, the world before porn. Their grandmothers tell them tales of the world before porn. These women have only had this kind of porn sex imposed on them. So the whole sexuality was formed, being conditioned to the porn tastes of men. Basically know this as sex, not by watching it on TV, but because, you know, that's the only experience they've had in their life with all their lovers, because there's just nothing else around for them. Porn famously doesn't work very well for women. You know, there are some women who get into it, but generally speaking, it, it is not concerned with, you know, how the woman's body uh, works. It is concerned in you know, showing the guy, you know, what he likes to see. What a lot of these young men are not aware of is that a very big proportion of these women they don't enjoy sex at all and you would never be able to tell by looking at her they have got used to acting to performing to getting off on just you know being uh, the sex object in a way that you know gives her some kind of control some kind of power but they're not feeling anything in sex they're not enjoying it they can't connect with it uh, that's epidemic uh, in this um, younger generation of women but you've got to remember everybody's trying to enjoy sex uh, everybody wants to have relationships, uh, they want to be sexy, they want to enjoy sex, they want to enjoy that part of life, so they are doing their best to adapt to it, to enjoy it, but this is sex as they know it. A woman these days, a younger woman, has two choices. She can have no sex or she can have rough sex because that's all she's going to get. She's not going to have no sex because, you know, she's not a nun, so she's going to have rough sex. And then she has the second choice to make. If she's going to have rough sex, she can enjoy it or she can hate it. Now, obviously, she's going to try to learn to enjoy it. She's going to find what to enjoy about it. She's going to make herself into a person who can enjoy rough sex because, you know, it's it turns her on because, well, you know, that is what she's going to have to be doing for the rest of her life. She will find things to like about it. There are things to like about rough sex. Nobody's arguing with that. A lot of women are actually still in that process. They are still not quite there. They are trying uh, to psych themselves up. They're trying to enjoy it. Will uh, this woman tell you that she uh, loves rough sex? Maybe. But, you know, how much of a self-created reality is that? So a lot of it is a cultural phenomenon. You know, people often think of rough sex as expressing some kind of like a you know, primal, natural uh, thing. I think it is very much a cultural phenomenon, a social phenomenon that has happened recently. And we totally have choice and control whether we want to go that way or we want to create a different thing with it. We don't have to go this way because it, I don't think it...